Welcome back to Wrenches in Motion, where if it ain't broke, I ain't buying it. And today, once again, we're going to visit the Ford Escape. At the end of the last video, I said I thought it was ready to go, and I took it for a test drive, and it died. Turns out that that uh, battery light that was on, even though I was measuring 14 volts at the battery, the alternator was puked. And that was also causing our uh, battery discharge. You remember I had a strange drain I couldn't figure out all of a sudden? It was the alternator. So, join me in this video. Uh, we not only do the alternator, but I think we tackle some suspension stuff in here as well. And now that that's all done, all I need to do is get it aligned and it's ready for sale yet again. We'll try this again. Well, we're back with the Escape again. And... I was going to say this is going to be the last fix, but then I saw something. So we need to replace the alternator, which is in there right above the axle. And the only way to do that is to take the axle out first and then maybe jack up the engine. So uh, 19 millimeters for the lug nuts, 32, 32 millimeter for the um, axle stud. I think these for the strut are going to be 18s. And one of the things you have to do, look at the long extension and the wobble socket. For the axle, it's bolted in on a plate. Um, right in there. Two 13 millimeter nuts. And the only way I found to get those is with this big long thing. So those are out. Axle's loose. I got to take the brake caliper off and hang that. And then undo the strut bolts so I can pull this down and as you're pulling it down you want to push the axle in to get the axle out of the hub and once you get that out of the way then you should be able to grab the axle and pull it right out and then after that there's three 13 millimeter bolts that hold the alternator in uh, once I take the belt off which is that let me get the flashlight that tensioner right there, which it's not going to focus on, but um, half inch drive in there to loosen the belt. And then you've got an electrical connection and a bolted in connection. And hopefully we can get the alternator out. I know it's kind of, you got to work it, but it'll come out. Um, also, I noticed the Control arm on this side is bad. It's probably bad on the other side too. So as much as I really hate to do it, I might end up doing control arms as well. Okay, escape alternator, day number two. Um, the only thing we've done so far is we released this clip. And of course the escape uses these little plastic things to keep the um, Allen bolts clean. Of all things to use, they chose Allen bolts for the calipers. So, we got our Allen wrenches. Let's see if we can get these calipers off. Or this caliper off, anyway. So, major mistake. It's not an Allen wrench. It's a T45 Torx bit for the caliper. So, now that we got that, let's uh, go ahead and get this off. I would put you on the stand and let you watch all this stuff, but... Pretty soon I'm going to be way inside there and you're not going to be able to see anything with me in there. So I figure I'll just do it little bit by little bit and maybe we'll see how much we can get you in there. Alright, so we got our strut loose. Um, yeah, that brake pad's going to come off. Now hopefully we can just push the axle through. Now, which of course it's not going to do. Why would it? So, throw the axle nut back on. Hopefully you can see all this. Let me switch a little bit. And then just give it some left taps. With a little bit of rust on here, it's, it's really hard to do, so. Um, Right, that's about as far as we're going to be able to get, get it right now. Let's 
So I'm using a brass hammer to try to not mess up the threads on the end of the axle. And I'm not hitting very hard. Okay. So with that being said, uh, what we do now, something slightly unorthodox, but if it works, is it a stupid idea? No. Okay, go over there then, fine. <clears throat> Take a socket. Hopefully. Oh, this isn't gonna work. I just can find some way to hold this up, like with a knee. Use a socket to try to drive this axle out. Oh my gosh. Now this is why when I put them back in I use a little bit of grease on the splines. And that excellent size is too big. So let me lay this aside. What I don't want to do is pull it so far that this joint separates. Because that would not be a good day. I'm just going to grab a random socket. And I have done that before. I have pulled the pull the actual joint right apart and then it's you may as well just go get a new axle I swear, I don't know why. Just come out. Like that. Oh, come on. There. Oh, that was work. Okay, so now, to pull the axle out of the trans, we're not going to grab it here. And we're not going to grab it here. We're going to go underneath because it goes from here to here the flange is bolted and then it's got like a straight shaft going into the transmission so we're going to grab that steel shaft and pull it should knock it right out so here's the axle out these are where the um, two 13 millimeter nuts go holds this flange in and this is the end that goes in the transmission you can see you can see my strap flying um, you can see this all steel, so you just grab this, pull it. I had to use a pry bar and, and pry it out a little bit, but axle's out, and now it's time to go for the alternator. Well, these alternator bolts are awful tight. So I just wanted to, I wanted to show you what's got what's going on here. See if you can. I don't know if you can see the the uh, Corrosion and dirt stuff that's falling out of here. So, I think I got one loose out of three. Okay, and it does have the uh, the plastic shield in here still, which is good. But I don't know if that's going to get in the way of us taking it out. I don't think so, but you never know. Or I never know. Anyway. So, let's see if I can get uh, bolt number two loose and then try to find a way to get number three. All right, so, uh, two of the bolts came out. One of them broke. Lovely. So now we gotta try to get this alternator out of here. And they say you kinda gotta roll it around and figure it out and it'll come out. But I'll tell you what, the last of one of these I did wasn't fun and this one's not being fun either. Look like they put the front down, the pulley down, and rotated it around. But there's really no room in here to do anything. All right, we're gonna come back when I can get this thing out. So I don't know how, but I got it out. Um, 
just playing around and playing around and playing around all of a sudden it just fell right out so I don't know what the deal with that is but if you listen to it I don't know if you can hear that something's going on inside so we're gonna take this in tomorrow uh, have them look at it test it and uh, rebuild it I think it's gonna need it and that is it for today we'll see you guys tomorrow at the alternator shop and look at this I cannot believe this thing it's freaking cracked all the way around so they say they got a new housing so let's get this thing rebuilt and hopefully get it back in the truck sometime today maybe okay back on the escape again it's another day we took the alternator to Brownings and had them rebuild it um, this cap had broke so they replaced that they even gave me a, a nut for the hot wire that's nice um, as you saw in the video the old case was cracked and split so they have uh, spare cases so they just pretty much threw me together an alternator real quick took less than two hours is done can't even hear it spin so let us uh, jack up the engine again. You can see the pieces from that cover sitting there. Let's jack up the engine and see if we can get this thing in here. This here is a long flex head uh, ratcheting wrench. And this is what you're going to need, a 13 millimeter to get that top bolt out because doing it from underneath is terrible that's you can't get to it hardly from the top but you can with this because you can flex it and it's long enough that you actually still get leverage enough which you need to get that alternator out okay so you see it alternators back in if you don't have one of these wrenches I feel for you doing this job it must have taken an hour and a half to get these bolts out and I just put the thing back in in 10 minutes so if you don't have one of these wrenches go get yourself one okay well, it's just a few minutes later we've got the uh, the axle bolted in so we're not gonna lose trans fluid I'm not gonna put the rest together uh, I just want to give it a start and see what happens now before if you remember we had the the battery light would come on or the battery light would stay on and it's still on okay well what in the world is causing that is the ECU not letting it charge now? Wouldn't that be something else? I definitely needed an alternator because the other one was cracked, but I really thought this was going to do it. So I just verified we got battery voltage on the alternator. And I came over here because nothing was making sense. And I look right down, alternator 15 amp, and that was missing. So I pop that in and let's give it a start and we'll measure we'll just measure battery voltage out here see if it's 14 like it's charging so as much as I wanted to I did not look at the dashboard when I started it all right 14 4 volts it's charging let's take a look and the battery light is out Oh my gosh, we have fixed the escape. Woohoo! Well, that is awesome. Still sounds good. So, um, next thing, it may need inner tie rods, but it needs control arm for sure. 
probably on the other side too. I'll just do them both at the same time. But I'm gonna throw this thing back together and see if we can take it for a drive. And the transmission is doing something weird. Um, when the torque converter locks up, you can feel a little shudder. And I'm gonna see if I can get you guys in here to see it. There it went. I don't know if you can feel it or not, but I can feel it. Um, <clears throat> let me try this again. As soon as we hit this 55 zone, we'll uh, we'll kick it down and then let it shift back in. Maybe you can maybe you can feel it. I don't know. Uh, probably not, but I know I can feel it. So we're gonna try to fix that today. Oh, there it went again. Okay, for those interested, uh, we've got a tube of instant shutter fix from LubeGuard. And I'm pretty sure this is just a friction modifier, but we are going to uh, drain the transmission fluid out. We've got five quarts of Mercon 5, which I believe we only need four quarts, but never hurts to have extra. And we're going to drain the transmission fluid, put the drain plug back in, add three quarts plus our friction modifier, uh, check the fluid, and add until we get the right amount, and then take it for a drive. It's supposed to fix it instantly, so we shall see. Uh, right here is your dipstick for the transmission. So we'll be pouring our fluid in there. And underneath should be a 3 8 square drain plug which is going to be under this panel which I did not expect to see. Okay, so we're going to have to take this panel off first and then we'll be able to get to it. Well, of course it turns out the drain plug is behind that little plastic thing so you don't need to take it off. Okay, well I apologize for the credit camera work. What we're going to do is we're going to take this out and uh, we're going to take a look at the fluid, which is going all over the place. It actually looks kind of red, so that's good. Uh, we got some cleanup on aisle six here. All right, so let's come back when this is done draining, and we'll put it back together, and we're spraying fluid everywhere again. Get out of there. Ah. Things are not going well so far. With the trans fluid drained out, we're about to refill. And I really hope this that this fixes it because I just bought lower control arms and inner and outer tie rods, which this thing needs. The uh, inner tie rods are a bit sloppy, at least on the passenger side, so I just got both sides. And same thing over here. Um, ball joints look a little crusty, so we're just going to replace everything be done with it. And then hopefully, this thing will be ready to rock and roll. Well, it's another beautiful day here in Virginia. It's about 70 degrees in November, which is really nice. So we are going to do the control arms and inner and outer tie rods today. So first thing we're gonna do is take the tire off and then take a look inside. I'm gonna try to set this on a tripod and hopefully you can get in there and see some of what we're doing. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is get this cotter key out of here and we're going to loosen this nut. Um, usually I just smack this with a hammer and the vibration will knock the tie rod loose. So we'll see if that's going to work. If not, I've got a pickle fork, um, which I don't usually like to use, but I will now because I'm not going to reuse that tie rod end. So see the old one in there. We got our nice shiny new one right here. This is the outer. Notice it's got a, a grease fitting in it, which is really nice. Not that anybody greases them anymore, but it's nice to have that. The uh, inner tie rod. I'm going to show you how to check that in a second. But there's the inner. 
And let's take this out of the bag real quick. Put it back in. It's just going to thread in there into the steering rack. Okay, we got that out. Let me try to move you somewhere. I'm not looking at the camera, so hopefully you can see. Uh, we got to loosen this jam nut. This is what you tighten up after you do the alignment. Of course. There we go. All right, one jam nut loosened. If you can get your wrench back off there. Is you push it in and out, and you can hear it chunk 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 chunk. So I know it's not. All right. Anyway, we're just gonna take this thing off. Ugh. So this is gonna be a 18. Of course, Ford uses different sizes for everything, so we'll just close that off real quick. And where's my hammer? I did bring the pickle fork out just in case. Hey, just like that. You can hear how loose it is. So we'll definitely be replacing that. Now, tie rod end. It looks okay, but we're going to count the threads to take it off. And then put the new one on the same amount of threads. And hopefully it's close enough to alignment where I can take it to a shop and get it done. So we're going to go one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. All right. Oh, that's definitely loose. Okay. So now we gotta take the boot off, which this side's easy. It's just got a, a little clip. You can slide that off. The other side has a, uh, like a band clamp. So we're gonna try to get something in there, like a screwdriver, open up the band clamp, pull the boot off. Um, but what I see right now is I'm gonna have a very hard time getting in there. Because if this doesn't, if this doesn't loosen it, that means you got to go on this end here and loosen it. There's much bigger, and I don't know if I'm going to have room to get in there. All right, I like to do multiple things at once and then get stuck halfway in the middle. So for the flat control arm bolt, it's a 18 millimeter that shoots up here. And you can see this is like coming out. So definitely needs to be replaced. Um, this through bolt over here is a 15 millimeter. So we got that out. And this nut for the ball joint, that's a 14. And I'm sure it's probably going to be a 14 on this side too. So we're going to work on that next. Using every trick in the book, we got the control arm out. And yeah, that side's kind of had it. The ball joint's definitely had it. But I did use the pickle fork. And that got it a little way out. And then the rest was just beating on it with a big old hammer. So when the ball joint goes up, there's a bolt that goes through here, through this little notch, and that holds it in. So what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna put some grease in here before we put the new, the new one in, and uh, hopefully it slides up. There's a better view of the uh, through bolt that goes for that one. And there's a view of the mount for the other one. Ah, oh, what a pain. Uh, what we may have to do to put this back in is I always put that one in first and then come around to do the front one and the ball joint last. We may need to uh, disconnect the spindle from the strut in order to put that in. 
but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. First things first, we need to get that inner tie rod out. Well, here's what we're working with. Uh, before we do that, let me show you the boot. Uh, the boot goes on there. There's a vent that plugs in here. And this slides over. We're just going to zip tie that when we're done. Uh, but what I want to tell you is, if you're replacing a rack or you're replacing this stuff and you tear your boot, let's say, let's say your boot's split, you need a new boot, go to the dealer and get one. I've had, I don't know how many different ones from eBay, Amazon, says, oh yeah, they'll fit. You get them in here, and this is too small, won't go over the rack. Um, just a real pain. I did it on a Mitsubishi, ah, what's the big one? Diamante, um, Nissan Armada, uh, various other vehicles, uh, Dodge Stealth. They just, none of the aftermarket ones fit. So go to the dealer, spend the extra couple bucks and get, get the right one. All right, so what we've got is, this is smooth around, so I can't even get a wrench on it. So I think the only thing I can do, I mean, there's no room to work at all. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this up, weld this ball to this part, and then I can use the wrench down here and try to twist this thing out. All right, so no one will confuse me with a welder. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to 15. Um, I just got flash blinded. I guess the battery in my helmet was dead. So I've got another helmet that's permanently dark and doesn't switch. So if this breaks, which I'm expecting it to, I'm just going to get that out. A little pressure. Yep. Oh, of course it's going to break. All right. So time to get a uh, time to get another helmet and see if we can throw some more weld on here that maybe it'll stick or maybe it'll get some strength. I don't know. All right, so we got our booger weld in there. Um, <laughs> I still could not get it out. I mean, I had the wrench on here. Uh, finally, I ended up using a foot wedge. And if you can see, it is uh, loose. So, let me, uh, of course, I didn't weld it straight. You know how that goes. But it is coming out of there. Look at that. Yeah, hopefully I didn't didn't burn the the uh, seal on the inside. But man, what a pain! All right, so there we go. Let's uh, spray it down, take a look, and then put our new one in. All right, so we got our new inner tie rod in. Now we're gonna put the boot on. Remember, this has got to go into that vent. And also, since we're not gonna use a um, a band clamp. We're just going to use a zip tie because it doesn't go anywhere, so it doesn't have to be super strong. Um, just remember, this is what I like to do, and you can do it however you like, but I like to put the zip tie on first because it, there is no room in there. So you put the zip tie on first. Once you get it up over the steering rack, once you get this part up over the steering rack, then you can tighten this up clip it and we're good to go and also once we get the boot on we're going to put our clamp on don't forget to put that first and then put your jam nut on so let's see if we can push this on here real quick oh that looks like it's going to go right there all right so this is where i'm going to probably be in your way i'm going to try to back you up a little bit maybe you can still see but this takes two hands to get that um, that vent in, so I'm probably going to be right in your way. Just so we don't forget, we'll go ahead and put our clamp and our nut back on. Come on. Well, you're supposed to go on there. I know I didn't damage the threads. Okay, so does everybody remember how far our outer tie rod went on? 24 turns, right? Yep. Okay, 
So let me uh, grab our pliers, tighten up that zip tie, cut the tail off, put the clamp on this end, and we'll get the outer tie rod and put that on. Okay, control arm time. And I decided I'm going to do something different, and hopefully it's going to work. I'm going to put the ball joint in first, um, slide this nut through there, or the bolt, duh. Um, and then try to put the other two ends in. I've got the axle nut loose because um, if I pull this out as far as I need to to get everything lined up, I'm afraid I'm going to separate the CV joint itself, and that wouldn't be good. So I'm going to try to pull the axle mainly out, and hopefully this will work. really stuck in there surprising because I did put grease on it last time I was I was in there but now let's just see if we can get this ball joint up in here first oh not far enough yet all right, we got the control arm in place with our jack. I'm sorry, the camera's still on the tripod. So let's go over here. There you go. We'll get the jack out of the way. Probably not far enough, but let's swing the control arm around. And pull it out, which this is where the axle being out would really be nice. All right, so let's take a look at the finished product. Got our axle nut back on. We got our outer tie rod, inner tie rod that's solid now, not moving at all. And we've got our lower control arm in. That's all bolted in. Uh, ball joint, all that stuff. So we're good to go. Put the tire on, and this side is complete. It's a continuation of the escape video. So I did manage to put like 50 miles on it and um, ran and drove good. The shutter fix fixed the lockup shutter. So that's fixed. Crossed that off the list. I already did the front suspension. You already saw that. So crossed that off the list. Um, it did have a really bad shake starting at about 60 miles an hour. And when you get up to 80, it was shaking really bad. So I looked at the tires. Um, they're not matched. Three of them have a 2016, which is six years old, and one has a 2014, which is eight years old. So this thing needs tires badly. Uh, it had been sitting for a while, so I'm sure they're flat spotted and they're old. But one thing I noticed uh, when I was backing up, I heard a, like a, a Squeaking almost sounds like a spring came off. So, all right, this side looks good. Or sounds good anyway. And then we come over to this side. And so, we're going to take this wheel off and investigate these rear brakes. All right, we got the hub off, which is easy enough. And I didn't see any spring loose or anything, but what I did find is down here, that should not be there. That should be inside there. So we're gonna see if we can get a pry bar and uh, put that back where it belongs. And that should take care of our squeak. 
All right, we got it pushed back where it belongs. Um, it was damaged a little bit, but not enough to go through, not enough to hurt the cable, so I'm going to call this a win. And we're going to put the tire back on, throw it back down, and we'll be good to go. I just got back from having tires put on because I just drove up to Fredericksburg, and wow, when you get up to 75, the front end really shook all over the place. So good to go there. And now it is officially for sale again. Um, hey, I'm going to miss it, actually. You know, it's a beater, but it runs and drives great. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the 2001 Ford Escape. We fixed the alternator. We replaced that. We did the uh, Instagard shutter fix, which solved the lockup torque converter shutter problem. We did inner and outer tie rods and lower control arms in the front, which took care of the uh, loose suspension issues. We got it safety inspected. It passed. And uh, the last thing we did was uh, I took it up to Fredericksburg, two and a half hour drive, and it was shaking so bad. As soon as I got home, went and had tires put on it, and drives like a brand new truck. So I'm happy with that. Um, it's for sale. Hopefully it sells quickly. We can get moving on to the next project. Until next time, keep the rubber side down and keep your wrenches in motion.